basically what's going on here is you know we're seeing this this railgun footage and the navy just kind of declassified these even though a lot of people knew about it you know from the transformers movie you know where they fire at the autobots or not the autobots but the decepticons that are on top of like you know the great pyramid or something like that um so, but so the navy has declassified this and and they actually um did some interesting demonstrations so these these rail guns the way that they work is they basically take an uh a magnetic field and they propel this this projectile um out by kind of columnating these these em fields and it you know it just like a magnet it's instantaneous um and so what happens is this projectile comes out uh the end of that that rail gun at you know mach 7.5 <laughs> which is an absolutely ridiculous amount of speed and yet um you know they're actually going to show some some slow motion footage of when it goes through and I'll tell you when that thing hits something I mean it just absolutely annihilates it and the projectile itself isn't very big you know but when it's going at 5600 miles an hour um anything that it even remotely touches is going to be completely annihilated oh, and here's that scene from the Transformers movie so so we're talking about a hypersonic railgun and the thing about this is the the reason that this guy is saying that it proves flat earth is because it really does um it doesn't have much of an arc to drop down um and as soon as it goes over just a few miles of the earth um then it would have curvature to uh contend with to be able to uh accurately hit its target well if it can shoot up to 100 miles well, we all know that the curvature in 100 miles is 6,666 feet, um, which is well over a mile, a mile and a quarter, a mile and a third, something like that. And uh, it would seem to me that, that the curvature of the, the Earth would make this fairly useless. Especially uh, for anything that would be any closer um, you know, than a hundred miles or anything like that before it would actually start arcing off. Uh, but until then, the drop is almost non-existent. So that leaves a whole lot of of area in between the the railgun and its target. You know, where there would be alleged Earth curvature. Well, because of the fact that they they can pinpoint targets. I mean, right down to a gnat's butt. Um, that tells us that they're not having to deal with any curvature. Um, because they would have to, you know, commensurately make the gun somehow magically arc around the Earth. And these are not smart projectiles. They're dumb projectiles. Um, they're, they're definitely aerodynamic, but they do not have any other type of guidance system in them other than the brute force of the magnets firing across. So I would have to agree with this guy in his assertion that, you know, if the Earth was truly curved, um, that it would make this, you know, completely impossible to work. But like I said, the biggest thing is, is the speed. I mean, they, <laughs> the speed is almost completely unbelievable. Uh, it's so fast uh, traveling at the, that the 6,000 miles an hour, what or 7,000, what was it again? I forgot, I've got to go back to it. But, you know, and we're, we're asked to believe, yeah, 5,800 miles an hour. We're asked to believe that the ISS is traveling, you know, more than three times that speed. Um, which is ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous and ridiculous to even think that that is possible without people dying. There's no way you could to, could navigate that. And again, this is one of those common sense things um, that, it, you know, the idea, when you really put it in perspective, that the ISS, that huge thing that's bigger than a football field, is traveling at three times the speed of the projectile from this railgun, ridiculous. No way. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, tunnels, railroads, bridges, rail guns, all that stuff uh, disproves the ball earth. And yeah, I totally agree with you about the speeds. There's just no way uh, the rockets are going 17,500 miles per hour. That's uh, 90 something or 87 football fields in a second. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, but no, that's a good point, though, man. I mean, you know, they're, they're dumb projectiles. Uh, that thing was going straight as an arrow. And yeah, they're not accounting for curvature at all, which would be something that would be 
uh, extremely important uh, for those uh, who are targeting those things. And it seems to me that uh, if there's no sort of uh, laser guidance or some sort of smart guidance and they're hitting targets, you know, from miles out um, and not doing the spherical trig that would be necessary on a sphere, then that's another good one, you know. Um, is it, you know, everything just works on the, the flat earth and, and really nothing works on the sphere. And, uh, you know, Wait, that's... Well, I'd like to interrupt that. There is something that only works on a sphere. It's called gravity. <laughs> oh, well, true. That is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but no, man, that, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. But, uh, you know, it's just like everything that comes out is always going to um, favor the, the flat earth truth as opposed to round earth or globe earth theory because, you know, I, I, this is something I like to say is that you can't prove uh, falsity correct and you can't disprove the truth. So uh, it is nice to be a flat earther, even with all the ridicule and all of the uh, snickers and, and sideways glances that you may get. Um, it's nice to have the truth on your side, right? Yes, absolutely. I agree. So, yeah, there's another thing to put in the old repertoire, you know, when you're talking with your ball earth friends about, you know, the impossibilities of living on a ball. Um, you know, here we have modern day technology that, that simply defies logic that it would ever be able to operate. I mean, this railgun can fire a hundred miles away. It can hit a target a hundred miles away, which is just unbelievable. Um, and yet very believable. I mean, I'm not doubting that they can do it, but uh, when you put it in perspective and compare it to, uh, you know, the requisites uh, of, of having to deal with a curved earth and also um, the fact that it's firing from literally sea level, just a few feet above sea level on the deck of a ship, well, you don't have a whole lot of, of land to play with before curvature starts taking over and uh, you wouldn't be able to hit much. And it, it would be one heck of an arc shot to be able to uh, hit a target 60 miles away um, that is, you know, several thousand feet below the horizon. Uh, I would love to see how that would be accomplished, but we all know that the, uh, that the Earth is not curved, it is not spherical, it is a flat plane, and that makes weapons like this much, much easier to be able to uh, utilize.